You are about to enter the world of urban legends, where fact is often stranger than fiction. Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between truth and urban legend. You are now entering the world of urban legends, where you'll see three stories. Two of them are myths, but one story is true. Can you tell which is which? Thinking inside the box, did someone send themselves on a trip in a crate to avoid the expense of airfare? A pudding company's flawed marketing scheme, exposed by a clever shopper. An unwanted care package, a soldier is sent a video with a nasty surprise message from home. Three incredible stories, and one is actually true. Can you tell which one is real? Watch all three and make your choice. We'll tell you if you're right at the end of the show. First up, shipping yourself home. Thanksgiving, a time for families to get together and celebrate all the good things life has to offer. But bus tickets and airfare are beyond the means of the young man in our story. In the fall of 2000, this struggling art student comes up with a clever and creative way to get home, and it wouldn't cost him anything. Meet Ricky Smith. I had this plan. I get a box, a crate, big enough to hold me, and post it to my mom's. That means she'd have to pay cash on delivery when the crate arrives. Ricky enlists the help of his friend to execute his brilliant plan. Ricky stocks enough provisions for the five-hour, 1,500-mile door-to-door journey. The crate with Ricky inside is wheeled to the shipping office. His friend lies when it comes to listing the contents. And with that, Ricky's on his way. Ricky's crate, along with other air freight parcels, are loaded onto the 10 a.m. flight. All is going according to plan. But Ricky soon discovers traveling in a cargo hold is not the way to go. I would not want to be a piece of luggage ever again because it was so cold. My body managed to keep warm, but I swear to God, there was seriously icicles on my face. The cargo hold isn't pressurized. There's little oxygen at 35,000 feet, and the frigid temperature puts Ricky's life in danger. Ricky's foil blanket barely provides him with enough warmth to last a three-hour flight. On touchdown, he's exhausted and falls into a deep sleep. It's bad timing. I didn't, I had, I didn't even know I was at my mom's house. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I have a package for you here. Package? Yes. What package? Uh, there's a $219 charge. $219 charge? Yep. You lost your mind? And my mom has no idea a package is coming. She's not about to pay $200 something dollars. So she said, she told, him to, she told him to take it away. Go, get it out of here. I don't want it. Get it off my property. The crate containing Ricky is sent to the uncollected cargo facility back at the airport. When he eventually wakes up, he realizes that everything isn't going exactly as planned. You know, I figured two hours later, I'm sitting in one place. You know, something has gone amiss. <laughs> and so I start freaking out. I start yelling, help, help me. You know, I'm banging, I'm banging on the crate and, and nothing, no, no one's hearing me. And I'm like, Oh my God, I'm, I'm stuck in this crate. I don't know where. I could be in some basement somewhere. No! No! Can anybody hear me in here? Unfortunately for Ricky, the uncollected cargo isn't going to be handled over the Thanksgiving weekend. There is no one to hear his calls. He can't even kick his way out of the box as the crate is surrounded on all sides by other freight. Realizing he's trapped, all he can do is wait. By now, he hasn't been to the toilet for 10 hours. His empty water bottle is the last resort. 
Ricky is desperate. A day went by and I was like, you know, I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to sleep when I can. Another day goes by. I'm thinking maybe I'm gonna die. I, I really, really, really was worried I was gonna die. Three days go by, I don't hear nothing. It was horrible, it was, it was terrifying. Worse than any horror movie you've ever seen. By now, Ricky is hungry and extremely thirsty. Living through extreme conditions is a true test of survival. Meet Bob Spohr. He's a former soldier from Britain's elite fighting unit, the Special Air Service. The average human being would need to consume two liters to 2.5 liters of water a day. Three days without water, you're a dead man. You really, very few people live beyond that. Without water, you'll soon slip into unconsciousness, you'll slip into a coma, and then you're dead. Desperate times call for desperate measures, so Ricky is driven to swig from his bottle of urine. It may have saved his life. It's not recommended to drink it, it you know, and eventually it will kill you because it backs up against the kidneys, um, but it would allow you to survive maybe a few more days. After a fourth day of darkness, Ricky hears movement. Workers back from the holiday weekend. My throat was so dry I couldn't even yell, but all of a sudden I get this adrenaline rush. Hello? I mean, thank God they heard me. Because if they hadn't, and they had walked right back out of that warehouse, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. Thank you, sir. Ricky is rescued. But the airline fines him $1,000. It is a federal offense to stow away on an aircraft. But Ricky avoids jail time, as it's determined his stupid act meant no harm. Adding insult to injury, he's also charged extra for freight storage. He learns a valuable lesson about his future travels. You know, next time, I'm gonna take the bus. An amazing story of survival and stupidity. But is it true? Find out at the end of the show. It's time for a mini myth. Mini myth number 721. The court courtship. When 47-year-old lawyer Sandu Gorgiatu walked into a court in Romania, he fell instantly in love with the judge, Elena Lala, but the case didn't stop there. Obsessed, Sandu couldn't be away from his beloved. So he spent a fortune bringing over a dozen pointless lawsuits over the following months, just to see Elena as often as possible. Is this strange love story true? It was the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. But the judge was already married, and the amorous lawyer's obsession soon faded. On Urban Legends, we present three stories. One is true, and the other two are just legends. So far, you've seen the story about the guy who shipped himself home in the cargo hold of a plane. Now, what would you do to get a free airplane flight? Would you obsess over chocolate pudding, like the pudding man in our next tale? We're all familiar with supermarket giveaways and promotions. Buy this and get that. Buy more, get more. But are you really getting a deal? In the spring of 1999, the health conscious packaged food company in this story comes up with a brilliant plan to sell lots of their product in a unique way. Meet Tim McMahon, company spokesperson. We've done some promotions before with giveaways. This is a slightly different giveaway in that you're giving away flight miles, which no one had done before. Their plan? Give away 50 air miles for every item purchased. Just send in the barcodes and the label as proof. The company offers to double the air miles if they are sent in by a certain date. Well, 500 flight miles is pretty good for most people. You did a couple of three or four of those, and you could take your family on a nice vacation. So we ran the numbers, and he said somebody would really literally have to buy four or 5,000 items. No one's gonna bust the bank on this. What's the worst that could happen? Well, that would be David Phillips. David discovers the promotion while shopping. 
I happened to be doing the grocery shopping one night and I saw an airline on a frozen chicken dinner, some kind of promotion, and then it said, buy any Healthy Choice products and earn 100 frequent flyer miles. So I started thinking about it and the dinner was about $3 and I said, you know, that, that's a pretty good deal. $3 for 100 air miles sounds okay, but a trip to Europe is 40,000 air miles. David would need to buy 400 of them costing him $1,200. Not a great deal. But David is hooked, so he begins cruising the grocery store aisles until he hits the big time. I came to this one store and there was a display case that had individual cups of chocolate pudding for sale. And they were 25 cents each, and each one had its own barcode. I started doing a little calculation, and I figured, well, I can get to Europe for like $70 worth of pudding. It's a deal too good to pass up. And, and I, you know, double check my math, and I just thought, wow, this is incredible. I mean, I was really excited when I found that chocolate pudding. And I just, like, grabbed the whole display case. It's a little embarrassing, but I actually was, like, you know, my heart was beating pretty hard when I saw that chocolate pudding. David then hatches a plan to buy up as much pudding as he can. I tracked down all of the other stores that were selling this pudding, and within no time, I'd basically cleaned off all the shelves of pudding within the area. Yeah, hi, um, I'm looking for some double chocolate fudge pudding. This all happened in 1999. At that point, I really didn't want to give up the secret of the pudding, so I'd, I'd just kind of look them in the eye and I'd say, Y2K. In total, I bought a little over 12,000 cups of chocolate pudding, so I spent about $3,000 on pudding. David is all but ready to pack his bags for Europe. He has enough pudding for 30 trips, as long as he peels off 12,000 barcodes. I realized there really was no way for me to get all of these peeled off in time to meet the deadline. The second problem I had was, what was I gonna do with 12,000 cups of pudding? But I, I got the idea that maybe I could donate all the chocolate pudding to a food bank or something. Maybe they could help me peel off the labels. So I did some calling, and I finally found a good-natured guy at the Salvation Army. Hi, David. Hi. How are you? It's the salvation David needs. He soon has enough barcodes to equal 1.2 million travel miles. All he has to do to collect is send them in. The promotion said wait six to eight weeks, and I waited eight weeks, and then I uh, contacted the company and said, look, I haven't heard from you, what's going on? Um, they said, we've got no record that you submitted the, uh, the barcodes to us. David's multi-million mile claim has overwhelmed the company. The package has passed from one department to another until it's eventually lost. But thanks to David's relentless efforts and his meticulous record keeping, the mistake is realized and David is triumphant. They sent me a box that was about this big, uh, just stacked full of 500 mile certificates. I ended up with 1,250,000 frequent flyer miles. Blunder is an understatement. So that's the story of one company's marketing blunder and the pudding guy who could fly free for the rest of his life. Did you believe it? While you ponder that, take a look at this mini-myth. Mini-myth number 99. A megastar mugging mix-up. Homemaker Lisa Reardon had just stepped into an elevator at a Las Vegas casino holding a bucket of quarters she'd won. Four burly men entered behind her. Then a fifth man stepped inside and said, hit the floor. Lisa dropped to the floor in terror, expecting to be robbed of her bucket, only to be greeted with laughter. She looked up to see the fifth man. It was Lionel Richie. The ex-commodore pointed out he only wanted her to hit the button of the next floor. So, did the crooning superstar really scare the Midwestern mom once, twice, three times a lady? No. This urban myth has been circulating for decades, featuring other celebrities like Eddie Murphy, Will Smith, and even Muhammad Ali, and always underlining some people's knee-jerk fears and false assumptions. On Urban Legends, 
you'll see three stories. Only one of them is true. Can you spot the fakes? Is it the one about the guy who sent himself home in a crate? Is it the man who buys pudding to get a free trip to Europe? Or could it be our final story about the soldier who gets a package from home? A shocking video with bad news. August 1990, 29 Palms Marine Corps Base, California's Mojave Desert. The 2nd Battalion, 7th Marines are awaiting deployment to Saudi Arabia. The heat, isolation, and boredom make day-to-day -day life stressful for the soldiers. Meet Lance Corporal Calvin Morales. The Mojave sucked. It was hot, arid. I mean, we were just sitting around, confined to barracks. It was hell. Meet Corporal Dean Highland. You know, like you're just on the edge of your seat every day, just waiting to ship out. But, you know, th there's just no action like day in and day out, so you, you kind of go crazy at some point. One man who seems to take the pressure in stride is someone the other soldiers look up to, Lance Corporal Peter Campbell. Well, Pete Campbell, he's a Marine's Marine. You know, he's the type of guy, like, when we're down in the trenches, you want him by your side. All I know is when I served with him, I mean, he was all right. He was hardcore. He, he always had his head about him. You know, nothing fazed the guy. Peter Campbell always seems cool, even in the heat of the desert. But beneath the calm exterior, a secret is simmering, and his tipping point is the delivery of the mail. The soldiers look forward to mail from home, Letters from loved ones and care packages keep them grounded and focused. Pete got uh, two boxes. Uh, the first one, I think, had like cookies and a videotape. He got a movie in one. I mean, we were bored that day. We figured, let's, let's toss in the tape. But no sooner does the action film begin when it's interrupted by what appears to be an amateur adult video. Halfway through the movie, uh, sort of a homemade porno came up. There was some really gnarly looking chick with this mask on and some dude. The tape featuring the masked woman continues to play. Pete opens the last little surprise from his wife. Inside the envelope, he finds something vaguely familiar. It's the same mask the woman in the film is wearing. And for Pete, the reality is about to hit him right between the eyes. All of a sudden, the chick in the porno movie removes the mask, looks into the camera. See, I told you I wanted to divorce Pete. The woman on screen is Pete's wife. Mrs. Campbell delivers the news to Pete in a cruel and devious way. At that point, the Iceman melts. His temper unchecked erupts with a fury that none of his buddies has ever seen before. But his wife has. Well, the rumors were that when he went back home on leave, he would slap his lady around, take his aggression out on her. That's the actions of a coward. Pete's abused wife exposes him for what he is and at the same time gets her revenge. So did Pete's secret really get exposed like this? Did his wife really send the divorce message in the mail? While you're thinking about that, take this mini-myth challenge. Mini-myth number 61 a ludicrous lie detector. New York, 1983. Crackhead crook Alphonse Del Mar, under intense interrogation, broke down and confessed to a crime. The cop's secret weapon? A sophisticated lie detector that was able to register his every untruth. But in fact, the lie detector was a kitchen colander placed on Del Mar's head, connected by a length of cable to an ordinary office photocopier. It printed out the words, he's lying, every time an officer hit the print button. 
Did the cops really use a colander to incriminate this crook? Nope. The story is completely false. It's been circulating since the 1970s and has been set in small police stations all over the United States. It's time to tell the truth about our three urban legends. First, let's settle our last story once and for all and expose it for what it really is. Did a care package from home turn out to be bad news for a soldier? No. The Dear John video tale has been reported since the mid-80s. Sending soldiers messages on home video was popular during the first Gulf War. So the legend continues to be rewound and played again and again. Like all good urban myths, it exists in multiple variation, each one just as untrue. The recipient of the video has been identified as a Marine, a basic soldier, a sailor, and a pilot. What happens on tape also varies. And sometimes you even find out what kind of cookies were sent with the tape. But it's still not true. That leaves two remaining stories. Pudding Man and Home in a Box. If you think it's conceivable, like the man in our story, that you can send yourself somewhere in a crate, stowed in the depressurized cargo hold of an airplane, then you are completely wrong. Ricky would have been dead on delivery. The extremely low temperatures at 35,000 feet and the lack of oxygen would mean certain death. It just couldn't happen the way Ricky had planned. And if he was lucky enough to survive that trauma, it's doubtful he could have come out of storage after four days. This stunt, besides being extremely dangerous, is also illegal but it hasn't stopped people from trying to stow away in this manner. We recommend buying a ticket. So that leaves the Pudding Man. He collected over one million air miles from just $3,000 worth of pudding. You may have seen it as a plot in the Adam Sandler movie Punch Drunk Love, and it's totally true. David Phillips really is the pudding man who turned 12,150 lids into several European vacations. I've always had in my eye for good deals and when I get intrigued by something, I tend to really go for it. This was by far the, the biggest, grandest thing I've ever done. He broke the bank. Did you guess David's story was true? If not, keep clipping those coupons and stay on the lookout for the truth on the next episode of Urban Legends.